All right, uh, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. My name is Adam, and uh, today we're going to talk about the Gundam novel, the original Gundam novel, how it compares to the first episode of uh, the original Mobile Suit Gundam. And before I get to that, real quick, uh, almost at 200 subscribers. Once I get there, this is someone's, okay? Um, Gundam Mark II, real grade. One of the best. Um, you know what? And on uh, Zach Aurelius and um, Kakarot197, they actually did a live stream recently where they compared all the real grades. I actually haven't finished it yet because it was quite long, but I know at the beginning of it they were talking a lot of good about the Mark II because, of course, it is one of the best mobile suits uh, or gun plus to build in. So if you haven't, yeah, as long as you subscribe, you're uh, you're in for that. So let's get started. Um, uh, last week, I think I mentioned I picked up uh, this uh, from Amazon. It's Awakening, Escalation, and Confrontation. It's the original the white three mobile suit. books of Mobile Suit Gundam. The first one was actually written, I think, around the time, maybe even before the first series or season came out. And then... Um, the second and third books were written during the time the novels or the the movie trilogy uh, came out in Japan. But um, what uh, what was really cool about reading uh, the novel is I was actually super um, impressed by how much it really follows the original anime, and I think a lot of it has to do with that they are able to because if you watch the original Mobile Suit Gundam, it it is kind of dark. It kind of has that violence, and I think it really does a good job. Then of translating what was in the novel and making it uh, a show for everyone to watch. Um, so I would say the first chapter um, of the Awakening, uh, Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam Awakening, is almost like the the first episode. Or I would say it takes some elements at the end of Origin, and it's the first episode of Mobile Suit Gundam. Um, so, you know, looking at this in reverse, I could see Sunrise did a really good job of being pretty faithful, um, to the original source material. Um, a lot of it has to do with Char. Um, you know, one thing they did bring up, and I don't know if maybe it was, and again, keep in mind, the original novels were written in Japanese by Yoshiyuku, uh, Tomino. I hope I said that right. I did that without looking at anything. Actually, let me look. Um... Yoshiyuki, so I might have said it wrong, uh, Tomino, um, and he, uh, he wrote it, wrote the books, um, and then so as it, uh, it yeah, it translated into English, um, and so, I, you know, things can get lost in translation, right, but after, you know, watching, the, you know, the first episode of Mobile Suit Gundam in the end of Origin, I could really see how faithful they are. Um, so some of the things were with Shar Aznavul, they talk about, and this is what kind of got me on the tangent about the translation, they talk about him wearing this extra mask, and, uh, it has to do with a scar, um, but then they were in the book it says, but he has his other reasons, which they explain in origin, and so maybe that the way they are describing him having his face disfigured was more of saying that a, uh, someone in the Xeon military would wear a mask if their face was this configured or as maybe i read more of the book they do actually explain that but really the idea is it has to do with his eye color and they get into that in origin um but yeah just recounting the events of mobile suit gundam while i was reading the book was pretty amazing because we have um the difference the main difference here being that the characters like amuro kai ryu um Hayato, they were already cadets or already pilot or I don't know if pilot's the word. Yeah, I guess pilots because they, they really talk more about the core fighters in the book. But yeah, they were already a part of the Earth Federation. Now, Amuro, it, it, it was the same in that Amuro was, uh, lived on side seven. He talked about Frau Bo and he even talked to her in more endearing terms in the book than at the beginning of the cartoon. You see, he's kind of he kind of ignores her. But in the in the book, he really does seem to regard her as a girlfriend. Um, so instead of the beginning of the cartoon of him and Frau meeting, or not meeting, but like having that situation where, you know, the sirens went off because of the uh, military, uh, the Pegasus coming in, the white base coming into side seven, um, set off some alarms because people had to take, you know, shelter because uh, the 
just like in the cartoon and just like in the book, you know, you have the, the Zakus, they come in at the beginning to try to look around to see if the Federation are hiding weapons uh, at, at Side 7, and they see the gun cannon, and then they talk about seeing the white mobile suit, but that there was like four of them. And so as you're reading the novel, you see the rest get destroyed except for the one, and that's the one Amuro goes for. Now, instead of the events being where Amro is trying to get to safety, uh, into where I guess they're having the people of the colony uh, hide in, I guess, uh, bunkers, emergency bunkers, um, which are true in both iterations. Uh, the difference here is that Amro is already with the Federation. So what he's doing, he's kind of helping out. Uh, as the people are trying to find safety and as his team, you know, leaves the Pegasus um, white base, I think it's because it's a Pegasus class and it's called the white base. Um, but, um, and, you know, the Zaku is already attacking and, um, you know, just like in the in the cartoon. And so but that what's really interesting is how himself, Kai, um, Ryu and Hayato are already hanging out Um and the, just like in the cartoon, like already uh, with the action, within all the action, um, we even in in because it's a little different in that Amro is now arriving at the time of the attack. Instead of him and Fraubo being together, he looks for her uh, as he arrives at side seven, or how, as he's trying to avoid the the attack that's occurring. And so he he finds her, and then she you know advises him that you know her mom and granddad i think as they explain it are dead you know it's like in um uh, in the cartoon where there's that attack when everyone's trying to get to the the evacuees are trying to get to the bunker right um and so all of that was very similar and i i was really surprised how similar everything really is really the only difference is being that amuro and the core group that we're familiar with are already a part of um the white base and so even when it comes to Sela, her backstory, the stuff that is talked about, they, they give some detailed backstory that's in line with the Gundam origin. So, again, it's really cool to see that, you know, it almost seems like it's, it's exciting to read the book after the fact because I can really already picture the things happening either from origin um, you know, Sela Mass uh, asks to be uh, brought to side seven in order for her to, you know, work there. Um, and they go, they go into a lot of details about her destroying, um, um, I guess, any type of uh, evidence of, like, the the weaponry or anything they didn't want to get in hands of uh, the Zeon's soldiers. Um, and it really goes into the background about her family and her dad, you know, being Zeon, uh, Zeon Zoom Daikun. These names, okay, these names. Um, but... Um, I so I got to say, so for the first chapter is just like watching the first episode of Mobile Suit Gundam, which I um, I would really like. I think I'm going to do a more in-depth review on that. Um, let me see if I can skip ahead on this. Okay, here's Amaro crying because he uh, probably killed someone. And that's, uh, uh, oh no, this is when he's getting into the Mobile Suit. Yeah, so same thing. Instead of him coming across... You know, what happened, there was an explosion, he got knocked down. Um, it, in the cartoon, he finds the manual for the Gundam, and he brings it with him into the, the mobile suit to start getting going. And this is a little different. You know, he's, he already has some training, so instead of him looking for a manual, he just kind of jumps in. But I love how they describe the cockpit in the book, where he gets in and he looks that, it looks like this mobile suit has seen some action in terms of their sticky notes, kind of explaining where some of the the uh, n numbers on some of the the tools are off and stuff like that, and some of the the training information that's already kind of like written, yeah, on the notes within. Like it gives it kind of that real world used feeling, um, which is actually throughout. Um, you know, some other things too that the book does that is not in the cartoon is i guess how violent it can get um there's 
a description of one of a friend. Now, and I forget, I should have looked this up. There's a guy named Sean in the book that doesn't seem to, I don't remember from um, the show, but there's a, a part where he gets hit by um, a core fighter that exploded. And he in his body goes flying, and Amaro describes it as looking like um, a, a blood soaked belt. It was hanging off of him as he was like laying there, and then as he goes up closer, he finds out it's just his intestines unfurling in front of him, and that uh, that's some awesome imagery. But it shows kind of how darker it gets, and then a as you read it, it even it, they go into descriptions on Zaku's stepping on bodies and the blood splatter and how. As Amro's running around, he is tripping over charred bodies, and he's even accidentally, as he's running, peeling off the charred remains to show the pink insides. It's it's interesting how graphic and detailed it gets, but I think it helps the broader picture of the fact that there's war going on, and war is bad, and it's dark, you know? And this really goes into the reasons why, for instance, you know, I'm a huge fan of of Star Wars, but... What Gundam does a little differently is it it gives the characters more characterization based on what they went through. So the death, um, the fighting, the, the PTSD that comes with that. And that's actually described in Gundam very well, whether it's the cartoon named for kids or the novel, which is definitely aimed for adults. And I think that's what then lends itself to the newest iteration being Mobile Suit Hathaway on Netflix, where it's very adult, it's very gory, but it's really talking about themes that are relevant in any sort of story being told that has to do with weaponry, uh, about two sides battling. Um, yeah, and so um, a lot of other cool things about the book, I really do recommend people read it because as certain things happen, like um, when... when um, Casval, I forgot his name, Char Casval, when he decided to use the normal suits to sneak into Side 7 afterwards to take pictures of uh, the Federation weaponry that could be there, there's a lot being described of what the characters are thinking, what they're going through as it occurs, and it gives a lot more underlying, I don't know, um, information and data of these characters to kind of really flesh them out, uh, and, and it really makes things very complementary to each other. But like I was brought up, there's some differences. Again, Amuro and, and Kai and all of them, they're already part of the Federation. They've been in training. You know, the difference with the cartoon is there there were just people living at Side 7 and they just happened to get involved. Although I want to say like, was it Hayato and Ryu or, or was it Ryu? I always get Hayato and Ryu confused, but one of them we saw in Origin was already a pilot. Um, and so, um, I, yeah, again, I recommend this. I'm going to, I will I'll definitely be finishing this. It is about, uh, it's it's three books, so it's about 500 pages. Um, and what I'll probably do coinciding with it is I'm going to then, you know, continue to kind of do a little review of each um mobile suit gundam episode and then i will kind of do a little review of the book uh and more discussion than review actually it'll be a discussion where we can talk about the certain elements that are described in the book or in the show and vice versa and how they differ um i would just say if, if anyone has any questions about what's in the beginning of the book as compared to what's in the the first episode uh just yeah leave a question in the comments i'd like to cover that or if anyone has any insight from when they've read the book and what you know, some insight they've got from that verse watching the cartoon. And then also, to really round things out, would be I want to. I bought the first uh, edition of the, or the first part of the origin manga. So I'm going to go through those as well as, you know, the movie trilogy. Yeah, and really get an idea overall. We can probably paint a bigger picture of background information on all the characters and everything. So, um,. Well, I guess that's it for now. Again, leave some comments. Uh, be sure to subscribe if uh, you want to enter that, uh, that contest. And uh, yeah, we'll talk later.